Now then, Amy, we'll simply switch bodies, and then we'll... we'll... No, I'd be back in my body, but then you and Bender would be switched. And the Amy and Bender bodies can't trade minds again since they just did. Oh, no! Is it possible to get everyone back to normal using four or more bodies? I'm not sure. I'm afraid we need to use... math. <laughs> Bum 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 dun 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 Hi copyright lawyers You don't see a lot of maths on television. I guess it's hard to compete with car chases and exploding buses and so on. Well there was that one time I tried to divide by zero, but apart from that, it's not really that sort of subject. Even archaeologists get to fight Nazis with a cool fedora and a whip. But why didn't they make Dr. Jones a mathematician? I will calculate the location of the Ark of the Covenant. Quick, fetch me my calculator. Numbers makes a good attempt to show that not all mathematicians are crazy old men in tweed. No, in reality, only some of us are like that. I do wear leather elbow patches, but that's only because I'm trying to give up leather elbows. Hey, hey, see, that was like a joke. It wasn't much like one, I'll give you that. But then, the mathematics on numbers is barely more than vaguely plausible technobabble. No, for real mathematics, you need to watch Futurama. In The Prisoner of Bender, Amy and the Professor have just finished their mind-swapping machine and decide to switch bodies. Now, naturally, I can understand why Amy would want to swap with the Professor's body, but I can't understand why a Professor would want to enter his young student's body. That would never happen. It would never happen. Unfortunately, after two bodies switch minds, they can never switch back. But maybe if they introduce another body, they can play a little mental musical chairs. So Amy's body and Bender's body swap minds. However, like a game of musical chairs at a five-year-old's birthday party, it inevitably ends in tears. Adding one extra body isn't enough to get everyone back. To cut a short story shorter, Amy swapped with the Professor, and Bender swapped with Amy's body, then the Professor's body swapped with Leela, Amy's body swapped with a wash bucket, Fry swaps with Zoiberg, the Emperor of Robo Hungary swaps with the wash bucket's body, a bucket, and finally Hermes swaps minds with Leela's body. This shuffling of minds, like shuffling a pack of cards, is called group theory. Working from left to right, you can see Fry and Zoiberg only swap with each other, but Amy first swaps with the Professor, then the Professor's body swaps mind with Leela, then Leela's body swaps minds with Hermes, so altogether Amy becomes Hermes. In the same way Hermes becomes Leela, Leela becomes the Professor, the Professor becomes Bender, Bender becomes the Emperor, and the Emperor becomes the Wash Bucket. Harsh. To sort this out, we'll need some maths, Ken Keeler, and a couple of globe trotters. A number of Futurama's writers have maths and science degrees. In fact, the writer of this episode, Ken Keeler, obtained a PhD in applied mathematics from Harvard University before becoming a comedy writer. I can understand why. Why work for a dump like Harvard when you can work for a dump like Fox? To undo what he had done, Keeler used group theory in what must be the most mathematically sound resolution to a TV show ever. Although Stargate already did it ten years ago. But I doubt they had a theorem. As the gang had already discovered, adding one extra body isn't enough, but adding two extra bodies will be. And here it is, Keeler's theorem. For each cycle, split the mind swappees into two halves. Everyone in the first half swaps with the first new guy, and everyone in the second half swaps with the second new guy. Then, with just two or three more swaps, everyone is back to normal, and that will always work. See, if Fry swaps with Sweet Clyde, and Zoiberg swaps with Bubble Gum Tate, then Zoiberg swaps with Sweet Clyde and Fry swaps with Bulgum Tate, then Fry and Zoiberg will be back to normal. And if everyone else swaps like this, then everyone is back to normal, if you can call any of this normal. This will always work. In this case, it took 13 moves. However, to Keeler's theorem, I will add Grimes Corollary. Since they had not swapped with the others, Fry and Zoiberg can take the place of Sweet Clyde and Bubblegum Tate, and you can do all of this in only nine moves. And Sweet Clyde and Bubblegum Tate could have stayed at home practicing their basketballing. But is that it? Can you find a better way? Let me know. See you. And they say pure math has no real-world applications.